Jason Ware joins us from Albion Financial Group, partner and CIO. We've got Amazon, we got Alphabet, we got Meta next week. Jason, any you're most excited for? Um, you know, we own Al we own uh, Google, we own Amazon, we don't own uh, Meta, uh, so we'll be watching uh, obviously those two pretty closely. Um, Apple's coming up as well, so a, a lot on a lot on tap, as you said. No, uh, no love for uh, Zuck's transfer transformation. Seems to be working for the stock. You know, we, yeah, we we used to own it, but the culture was just toxic, and it was uh, it was it was. It was a company that we thought had kind of lost its way fundamentally. I think certainly AI has reinvigorated that story. Um, but I think that's going to be the focus on the call here and in the in, in the quarter is they spent a ton of money on AI CapEx, as we all know. They're one of the few companies that have actually shown some ROI on that AI spend. The stock is now trading at 30 times. You know, when we owned it, it was a lot cheaper. It was more like a Google PE. Um, our, uh, admittedly, we sold it too early, um, but uh, yeah, I think folks will be watching for, can they continue with the momentum in AI to justify that multiple? Uh, they had a big, uh, obviously, financial kind of uh, uh, cleanup in uh, 2023 with the year of efficiency. Yep. Uh, do they deserve some credit for that? Yeah, I think so. I mean, we saw a lot of cost optimization across the technology landscape, and, and I think Meta was certainly part of that and and yeah margins have gotten better uh, but at the same time you know we are at probably the forefront of a multi-year wave in capex spend not only from meta but from the likes of google amazon microsoft etc so yeah i think they deserve credit for that zuck's done a pretty good job of i think turning that business into a more profitable entity but you know i think there's still some cultural risks there and and again they're spending a ton of money on ai and, and there's going to have to be a payoff over the long term uh, one of the things that uh, they do share in common with the others is that they're certainly spending a lot and uh, willing to spend on the AI build out. The CapEx numbers across all these companies are pretty lofty right now. Huge. Do you think they've yep. got a license to spend by the market, this suite of companies generally, if it's on the AI stuff? Yeah, I think they do. Um, I, they've been given a pass, Meta, and again, all the mega cap tech stocks have been given a pass over the past, you know, let's call it four quarters, because as Sundar Pichai from uh, Alphabet recently said, you know, we would rather overinvest than underinvest in AI. And I think that really captures the sentiment at the moment, both at these large companies and across Wall Street, which is, you know, if we spend too much and AI turns out to be not quite as um, you know economically sound as maybe we thought it was, that's probably better than it turning out to be so you know transformative. And these companies didn't invest enough, and now they have to catch up, or they're just dead. So they have the balance sheets, they have the free cash flow to justify spending these types of dollar figures. And I think as long as they are doing so in a way where Wall Street says, you know what, that makes sense. They're, they're spending on infrastructure that's supporting the AI uh, uh, needs of the business, then I think we'll, they'll continue to get a pass. At some point, we're going to start scratching our heads, I think. I mean, we're talking about 200 plus billion across the mega cap tech landscape in terms of AI CapEx over the next 12 months. Um, if that keeps going up, I think they're going to have to justify it even more. But um, yeah, it's been a lot of spend, no doubt about it. For sure. Okay, uh, hang on with us. Let's come back to talk some alphabet and some detail in a sec. Tom, you look at the uh, meta options. What do you see? Uh, implied volatility elevated going into those earning that earnings report. Stocks up over 60% so far this year. So it's had a good run, right? Sure, yeah. How do you play this if maybe you've missed the run up or you're still bullish on it, but uh, maybe you want to give yourself a little bit of cushion? Take advantage of that higher implied volatility. Use the uh, option market. Stay in risk to find. I think that's going to be key going into earnings. Uh, because when the bar is set high, you better hit on everything mm -hmm. and guide higher. So uh, went up to the November 1st weekly cycle, so you'll capture uh, next Wednesday's earning event here. Uh, and I looked at selling the uh, 550 strike put uh, that's neutral to bullish, right? Uh, but I want to make it risk to find, as I said. So I'm buying the 530 strike put against it. So uh, neutral to bullish, $20 wide short put vertical. You're collecting roughly a credit of 6 bucks. That's what you can make on this trade. 600 bucks per spread uh, with about $1,400 in risk, and that's below 544. You max out uh, on losses below that 530 strike, but this might be the way to set up uh, going into meta platforms in case it does pull back implied volatility levels. As I said, really elevated going into this report, so you're capturing a nice $6 credit on a short $20 wide put vertical while giving yourself that better probability of success because that short 550 put you sold in this type of strategy 
uh, has a probability over 65% that it's going to be out of the money at expiration, mm -hmm. which is what you want. Okay. All right. So most likely you're collecting the credit. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Not too aggro. Yeah. Respecting both the trend, but also the potential for, you know, maybe some swings. Yeah. Given uh, that, uh, you know, when you're, you're dressing as flashy as Zuck is, you, you got to hit your numbers. <laughs> Better. Yeah. The hoodie's gone. Yeah, exactly. All right. Uh, let's talk some alphabet here. Uh, when you think about this, Jason, uh, the uh, AI competition and uh, the device competition, too, what, what drives the stock for Alphabet? Because it's been a little bit more of a sluggish one. Yeah. Yeah, it's been sluggish recently, primarily because of the regulatory overhang. Um, look, I mean, Google slash Alphabet, um, you know, has been a cheap stock relative to its mega cap peers for a long time. And that's because they constantly deal with these relentless overhangs of competition, obviously being 90% control of search. That's a wonderful business that's growing mid teens and has good margins. So there's been a lot of companies that have been coming after Google for years. Um, so there's this, there's been this competition piece that's kept the, the multiple lower. Um, and then of course, recently we've seen that ramp up because of AI. So uh, I think they've largely addressed those concerns and they continue to hold market share and continue to grow and compound that business. So we're not too concerned about that. But getting to your point about how it's kind of been sluggish, I think recently we've seen a reacceleration of overhang from Department of Justice and the federal court ruling in August. So I think there's going to be a fair amount of focus on that. I don't think the management's going to give much to analysts in the way of what the regulatory looks like, but that's certainly impacted the stock and we'll see, we'll see what happens going forward. Um, but the business continues to do well and, you know, we like it. It's trading around 20 times. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for Alphabet, um, do you think that they'll pick up any of the uh, holiday uh, phone cycle? Does that matter? I mean, the market is really jacked up about what is going to happen with the iPhone cycle. But, I mean, the uh, uh, Google phones, too, have some pretty solid AI on them. Yeah, they do. And, and I think that's a small piece of, mm -hmm. of the Google story. I mean, this is still core search. It's digital advertising. It's cloud. That's going to be a big um, focus in the quarter. I mean, Google Cloud is number three in the cloud market. Um, but we've seen a reacceleration there because of AI workloads moving to the cloud. These hyperscalers are having to um, you know, supply their compute and storage for AI. And, and that's been a thesis of ours for some time is that Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, Amazon AWS, and Oracle would see an acceleration in their cloud businesses because of AI. So that'll be a focus. I think we're looking at maybe getting back to 30% growth in cloud. So we'll, we'll see where that goes. Starting to become profitable. Um, it's a great business. And the uh, Bing search uh, powered by AI, not going to take uh, Google's dominance just yet? Yeah, not so far. I mean, there was a lot of hand wringing over that in 2023. Yeah. We saw the stock sell off. I think Google got down to 80. Um, you know, we were like, this is way too cheap for a company that's still dominating search. And quite frankly, you know, when you become a verb, Google it, it's hard to dislodge that. And being with chat GPT just wasn't enough. Uh, we'll see how it evolves over time. AI is early on and Google's putting a ton of money, as you know, into Gemini. And I think they've done a good job of defending their competitive position. Very true. Thanks, Jason. Appreciate the thoughts very much.